Hi, this is Elizabeth with the Westerville Public Library, and today I'd like to give you an overview of our program, How to Ditch Cable TV. This is a class that we teach at the library, which is usually very interactive, and in that we demonstrate different devices and streaming equipment so that you can see how they work in person. We thought today we'd give an overview so that you can start your research. There's a few items to consider when you think about streaming from home. First one is, do you want to save money or what is your overall budget? Do you have access to high speed internet? Are you willing to wait a few days for your shows? And what content can you live without? There is no right way to start streaming. We always recommend that you figure out what you'd like to watch and what is best for your situation. The average cable and phone bill has continued to grow over the past few years. And another consideration is, do you need a home phone number? Are you interested in a contract or something that's month to month? And are you interested in original programming? We always suggest you calculate your maximum budget and consider what you pay now for the services you use or don't use. You can then select streaming services for the content you like, total the costs, and evaluate if that new cost is less than what you are paying now. For example, a standard cable bill with TV, internet, phone, and surcharges might be around $176 plus or minus. If you add in an over-the-air antenna, a movie streaming service, Netflix, internet and phone, you might be able to get that down quite a bit. Again, this depends on what packages and programs you and your household are interested in viewing. Here's a quick guide to some steps we recommend. And you might pick a plan that guarantees at least 30 megabytes, megabits sorry, per second and up. Again, this depends on your area, what you might like to stream if you are using games, multiple platforms. You can then look at the right streaming device and what apps and services you might use most often. Choose a service as a start and purchase an optional antenna if you would like to get some local programming and the over the air channels you might be used to receiving. Streaming, in effect, is television, movies, original programming delivered through the internet to a device. There are many ways to access this through a device, a smart TV, a computer. Generally, we pay a monthly rate for streaming services without signing up for a long contract. To many, that's a plus. You may remember an over-the-air antenna which can broadcast channels, some specialty channels, um, here are a couple of websites. You can also Google those or email us at the library and we can provide the links. An over-the-air antenna can start at about $18 and might include the standard networks. There is a website listed here at nocable.org for you to check availability in your area to see which channels are available. The positive is this can keep you in contact with free over-the-air local networks. A downside can be weather and general interference that sometimes occurs. Related to this, buffering and loading is a problem we often see with internet speeds that are not fast enough. The speed, again, will depend on what your household will use, how many people you have streaming, if you have multiple devices, multiple people streaming at once, or online gaming. There's a website here for you to do a speed test at home as well if you'd like. When we talk about devices, this is the, one of the more challenging areas because there are so many. Um, we suggest you do some research before you purchase. The library can help you with this. We have access to consumer reports and some other articles that will profile and evaluate some of the devices. Stick devices are of an affordable option that can plug into a TV that has the correct ports on the side of it. So a newer TV, this should be able to work. A Roku is a device with lots of different options and sizes. There's a little box. There's a stick that can plug in. Amazon Fire TV stick is wonderful as well if you already have an Amazon account specifically and use Prime. Google Chromecast is great for smartphone and tablet device centric users. Apple TV if you're an Apple user and the PlayStation 4 and Xbox. If you have a newer gaming console, you can likely use it to stream content. This article is a little bit older uh, from at the end of 2018, but has a comparison of some of the different types of devices, the prices, and the overall ratings. Again, if you email or call the library, we, we would be glad to pull some articles that are perhaps more current and share with those with you. 
Um, one caution is that prices are constantly going up and down around holidays, different times of the year, so they do fluctuate regularly. If we talk a little bit about streaming services, there are many available. You may be familiar with some of them like Netflix, Hulu, YouTube. There are on-demand streaming services where we can watch program at our leisure. Live streaming is more live TV that we can access. There are also then some that are on demand. So again, lots of different price points, lots of different packages. There are some add-ons such as HBO, Prime TV included if you are a Prime user. Uh, YouTube is about $40 a month, works great with a Chromecast device. So lots of options and choices to try to find the one that meets your needs. Again, here's a little chart that shows some ratings, who it's good for, starting prices. These have shifted a little bit. And how many streams you can have at once is always a question we receive. So for example, Netflix, some packages can have up to four different streams at a time. So if you're sharing with family or friends, you can all log on, watch independently in the same household or outside of the household. Some have live programming, live sports. Some do not, such as Amazon Video and Netflix. Some have their own original shows. And of course, some have ads, some do not. I'd like to talk a little bit about free and specialty video streaming services. Hoopla, H-O-O-P-L-A, appears a library resource that has access to movies, television, music, eBooks, audiobooks, with your library card. Each of us may borrow six items a month to stream for free. There's a three-day checkout for TV and movies. During this coronavirus quarantine period, we have increased that to 10 items a month, and there are some items, um, additional items available as well to help keep us all entertained. There's a PBS streaming app um, that varies by price and by package. BritBox, and Acorn TV are paid services, although the library now is pleased to offer you Acorn television that is free with your library card. Many of you are familiar with Disney Plus that launched at the end of last year in ESPN, and there's several other sport networks that are available. So Hoopla is a great starting point because that is free, comes with your library card, and there are apps for various devices. If you use a DVR now, you may be wondering what happens to my DVR if I stop my cable. Well, many of the streaming services offered come in the form of using a cloud. So they are available whenever we want to access them from the cyber cloud, if you will. Um, there are other services like Sling TV that have additional fees for their DVR service. Uh, Hulu offers several different storage options. YouTube TV has unlimited storage. There are separate DVR options if you are interested, but do keep in mind you don't need a DVR to watch your on-demand streaming services as that content is always available as long as that provider continues to offer it. For example, Netflix may have certain shows only for a month or two months, six months, and then they may change their lineup, but anything that is available, we can watch on demand in that time period. Here are a couple of articles about Roku versus Apple TV. Uh, I'd like to highlight that CNET.com, NoCable.org, uh, and Cord Cutting Report are some good resources. And a quick review is to look at what are you actually doing? What do you actually want to watch? What do you want to pay? Set your budget, work backwards, and see where you are. The best thing about cutting the cord is there are no long-term contracts. You subscribe to what you want when you want it. For example, if you want to watch an HBO show like Game of Thrones, you could watch that in one or two months on HBO Now and then perhaps cancel. Same with Netflix. Often you can do a trial period or start as a one-off, see if you like it, and then think about if it's worth your investment. You can also think about having a TV antenna with a streaming device and combine packages to get to where you need. There are several articles available here as well. They can be found um, by Googling. Again, you can contact the library and we'll be able to send you these. PC Mag, best products. They have a lot of good reasons. And again, CNET, 
that I mentioned in Consumer Reports, which is free online with your library card. Again, my name is Elizabeth. I haven't cut the cord yet because my husband watches a lot of international sports and to get a package we want with all that we watch globally was a little difficult. I like to watch the Great British Baking Show, UK News. We watch a lot of UK and Australian television and I use a Roku device most often. Uh, my colleague David, who often presents this with me, has never had to cut the cord because he uses his PlayStation 4 and has not always been able to get by without needing cable. Thank you for joining me today and please feel free to contact us if we may help with anything. On our website you'll find our telephone numbers and you'll find a contact form if you'd like to email. We also have a live chat box if you have a general question for us and we'll do our best to get back as soon as possible. Thank you so much.